you go to the end of the world and find a goal in yourself. I gave you that black eye, didn't I? Well, if you're trying to pick a fight again, you'll get me. Ah, you, if you're gonna fight, move away from the tables. I'm not gonna fix any broken tables again. Whenever you feel like getting your jaw broken. Hi there, it's Kevin Van Ord here, standing in for reviewer Brett Todd to tell you about Xenoclash 2. Xenoclash 2, like its predecessor, is a weird first-person beat-em-up. It's far more memorable for its surreal atmosphere than it is for its artless fighting mechanics. Although the button-mashing brawling zips along quick enough to be somewhat hypnotic, the main reason to stick around is to see what kinds of fever dreams the developers might concoct. As with the first Xenoclash, you play a guy named Gott, who lives in an alternate dimension called Xenozoic. The plot is completely incomprehensible. You begin by helping to spring a lurching freak called Father Mother from prison. From there, you move into an adventure that resists any sort of explanation. Even the dialogue is incomprehensible. You'll need to have played the first game for any of this to make any sense to you. What happened? I escaped through the sewers, but they followed me. I was lucky Pop was here. Yes, I was looking for my parents, dead here in this cave. The golem knew they were dead, but he told me where to find them anyway. And is that in your backpack? Then? Yes. I'll carry my other parents with me now. Reality is, therefore, a long, long way from anything in Xenoclash 2. Landscapes are completely surreal and populated by freakish fauna. The architecture is bizarre, and little touches like disembodied heads and hands on furniture drive home the surreality. Birds are randomly tethered to the ground. Trees sometimes sprout trumpets that spew water and blow bubbles. Enemies that roam the world tend to be bipedal humanoids, but after that, all bets are off. You encounter elephant men, goons with prehistoric burka hoods, giant bloody birds, and all manner of deformed monstrosities. It all looks attractively nightmarish, but the visuals can be needlessly bewildering. This is a particular problem when you have to solve the game's handful of puzzles. It's hard enough to figure out what things are supposed to be, let alone figure out what you're supposed to be doing with them. Gameplay goes too far in the other direction. Xenoclash 2 is all about simplistically punching enemies in the face, either on your own or with a buddy in cooperative play. Most often, when you encounter freaks who want to rumble, you go into a brief setup screen where you pick allies to help out, and then you wade into the fray. All of the punching and kicking is done with simple mouse clicks or gamepad button presses, which are augmented by a suite of combos. There's a fair bit of combat in the game, but you never get bogged down in battles for long stretches of time. There are other combat options, but they don't add up to much. Skull bombs are almost useless because they take forever to explode. There's a new gauntlet that you can use to focus the energies of the sun or the moon and then blast away at foes. It's great when taking on crowds, but it's tough to effectively use because you have to take your attention off of your enemies and spend a few moments gazing skyward. You can also link foes together so that by damaging one, you damage the other. This spreads around the pain and is the most useful of the new gimmicks. Overall though, the add-ons in Xenoclash 2 don't do much to improve combat. It's almost always easiest just to rely on your fists. Combos are overly simple. You can get past a lot of enemies just by moving around and punching. Some of the more involved combos are tough to pull off. Clicks are often ignored, and single clicks are sometimes translated into two or more, which makes certain combos frustrating. Totems can be collected around the map now to let you boost RPG-styled stats for strength, 
stamina, and leadership. The latter category is what governs how you can add AI friends to your punching parties. But punching alongside allies doesn't really add much to the game. Your pals aren't bright enough to make any real difference in battle except when it comes to distracting enemies and big gang brawls. If you want a better sense of cooperative clobbering, invite a friend to join you. If you're looking for something really, really, really different, Xenoclash 2 might just fit the bill. You won't find this sort of art design anywhere else but the first game and old psychedelic album art from the 70s. But the gameplay remains a letdown, as the few refinements and changes don't build anything significant atop the original game's simple gameplay. This, plus the off-putting way that Xenoclash 2 renders it nigh impossible to connect to its story and characters, makes it easier to appreciate the game for its attitude than it is to actually like it.